Kelvin Thomas, obviously we've all seen the statement this morning to say that Fia Bristow will step down in the summer from her role as chairman. What yeah. does that mean for Talk United Football Club? Well, it's actually quite a positive thing in the end. Um, you know, it's not positive, obviously, Thea's leaving, but it's a positive that she's leaving the, the club in a, in a debt-free position. Uh, doesn't happen very often, and I think it's very generous of her. It's, it's an incredible sort of gesture, and it perhaps shows her love for the football club that she's almost left the slate clean for someone new to come in now. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, actually, that's probably a good description of it. You know, there's a chance for someone now who's who's got an interest in in, in taking the club forward. Not it's not a, a position for someone just to come in and say, "Oh, I own a football club." It's for someone who actually you know really wants to drive it forward and and hopefully get it back in the football league. Because if you look across the football pyramid in the football world, quite often a hindrance to buying a football club is the the debt that a new owner is burdened with. In this case, that person, whoever it might be, won't have that. Especially, yeah, absolutely, and 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 also the amount of money that someone needs to come into it and to to pay down debt or to to write off debt to banks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, Thea doing this has really given the club a chance to 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 push on and and somebody to come in and and look at the situation and uh, and make the changes they want to make. And they're not that the hindrance isn't someone else's mistakes, as it were. It's it, it's their own <laughs> it's their own mistakes maybe going forward. But you know, but as we all make, but. You know, it's their choices and their decisions that will dictate how, how, how well the club goes forward. How do you anticipate the process to happen now? Because obviously we will actively seek out people, but I imagine people will come to us as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I've had a call today, in fact. So I, I think, you know, once people digest the statement and realise that, oh, you know, there's a chance here of, of going into a, a good football club with a, with a great infrastructure, you know, a good stadium, uh, in a great part of the world, you know that, that people are going to go. Oh, that's, that that becomes quite interesting. Because there's always there's been this sort of theme for through Talk United for a, for a couple of years now that if he had left, we'd be in deep trouble. And but actually, the way she has left has given us a real chance to push forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think if there, it, it had been a sudden event, it would have been a bit more of a problem. Um, but the reality is, because it's a, it, there's t- the timing's right, and there's a, there's a time period and a, a, of almost four months to actually to get something in place. I think that that helps tremendously. You mentioned the word infrastructure, and we just look around and the fantastic stadium stand behind you. And for a conference football club, which is what we are now, Torquay United is right up there, isn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. The you know the infrastructure here is is, is very very good and. Even last night, you know, the result didn't go as, go as well as you'd have liked. But, you know, the, the Chester directors were the first time they'd been here, I think, since the stand had been built, and they were they were very impressed. So, moving forward, and just just a final question: what what does your sort of job entail now for the next couple of weeks, if you like? Uh, just basically talk to people, um, try and you know wade through the the people that do come forward interested. Uh, help out still a bit operationally in terms of infrastructure and uh, preparing some things for the current board and Thea in terms of some options going forward in terms of budgets etc so you know it, it, it's quite a lot of work you know, over the next few weeks um, and uh, just to try and make sure that you know the, the, the big job now is to try and find the right people to, to take it forward that's a key word isn't it the right yeah. people yeah yeah absolutely and the uh, current board existing board you know uh, fans, sponsors, Tust, or you know, people that have the ability, not just the desire, but the ability to take it forward from a financial and operational. Because this isn't an opportunity just to just to come in and say, oh, I, you know, I own the football club and you know, it only cost me a pound type thing. This is someone who has to have some sort of financial ability to to for the cash required over the course of the next couple of years to to really to drive the club because it is an investment you know it's not a it's just not you're not just putting cash in you're investing in the future and that's that and that's the key because it's not a, well it's not a status symbol is it there's a lot of livelihoods um there's also a massive supporter base that that we are dependent upon and we owe something to as well there's you know there's a there's a there's a lot of different reasons to own a football club and you, you see that all the way through the pyramid you know there can be egos there can be taxes you know they're, 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 everything and uh, the the important thing is, if it is an ego, it needs to have an ego with with financial backing. Or if it, you know, the key is is someone that has the financial capability to to uh, to, to to take a club like Torquay and 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 push on.